You know, this could be the hardest thing I've done on the show. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I am sweating. Hi, I'm Yuji. I'm a professional chef. These are my $513 salmon dinner ingredients. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a home cook, and these are my $21 salmon dinner ingredients. Come back delicious. All right, let's do this. I'm not scared, you're scared. Storable salmon. I can work with this. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do the whole fish, huh? So I was planning to make roasted kombu cured sakuramasu oyako donabe. I had a whole sakuramasu. It is a wild cherry salmon from Japan. This is insane. How'd you get this in here? To break down, cure in kombu and then roast. Clams, mussels, clams. I had a manila clam to make a special broth with roasted sakuramasu bone. And then cook koshihikari rice in a donabe pot. All served with pickled robinesco and a watermelon radish. This looks like a cauliflower meets under the sea. And ikura shoyuzuke, soy marinated salmon roll. Oh, is this caviar? Made with kumsquat. Tiny baby oranges. Aged shoyu and junmai sake. I'm happy whenever there's alcohol involved. I'll be real with you. It was going to be very, 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 very delicious. Daniel, don't mess it up. Damn. With the Daniel's recipe, I have a much, much simpler ingredients. Stuff you might find in your pantry or local grocery store. With a little bit of a technique, you can make it even better. If I have to guess, this whole thing will cost me probably $25. <laughs> Almost. I would say this all costs about $197. Five? This is half a thousand dollars? Why do you trust me with this stuff? I have Chef Yuji's recipe book here. I'll be making roasted kombu cured sakura masu oyaku donabe. I have no idea what any of this means, but there's a little bit of a framework here that I might be able to follow, which is exciting. Daniel, you're gonna be starting with breaking down whole salmon. Bye-bye now, we'll see you guys. You're gonna take off the head and the colors from the rest of the body. Here we go. This special salmon came from a fish auction from Japan. Thanks, Sammy. You're welcome. This has been great. Take the body and just cut it from one side. So I wanna separate like the actual edible good meat parts from the stabby in your throat bone parts a little deeper. All right, yeah. I was missing out on like an inch and a half of meat in there. Meat to halfway, turn it. Completely botched off the rip. This is, uh, I had to make two cuts, but the good news is you see all this meat that would have been left behind if I hadn't gone back and done that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side of the fish. And I cut it, meat in the middle. Does it matter if the fin's still connected on this side? Okay, cool, cool, cool. No doubt, no doubt. And then the meat will come off. Super easy. This is a mess. <laughs> I'm just so happy there's two sides to this fish. I think this top half, complete learning experience for me. Second half's gonna be so much better, it's like it's never happened. But this is still edible, so I, this will be my half. After that, you're gonna do one more time for the other side of the body. You know, life's all about second chances. I have never concentrated on anything this hard, I think, ever in my life. I'm feeling better, but it could still look pretty rough out there. I'm not gonna flip it over until we're fully done. We're already through on this side, see? At this point, you have two beautiful fillets of salmon. So they're ugly. And then one big middle bone. That was so hard. I am sweating. Do I have to clean them up? Absolutely. But for my first time ever, not Horrible. Daniel was probably planning to make some simple and healthy salmon dinner with brown rice and a vegetable and some simple sauce. I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna be making salmon kakiyage rice burger with caramelized orange teriyaki sauce. The salmon actual meat is gonna be inside a burger and then the skin is gonna be on the side with other vegetables. First, I'm gonna separate the salmon skin. I am gonna get these cleaned up, get rid of these extra bones. No one wants that. My goal here is just to get the bone off. I don't want to lose any meat here. This really is like fish surgery. There's like a whole row of little bones in here. I have to like tweeze these out. There's so many of them. I could totally see this being like a, you know, a satisfying TikTok video or whatever. I think I've got them all. So now I have, I have to portion two to three ounce pieces or fillets. Fillets are filleting. I'm gonna cut this in half. So I have this salmon skin two parchment papers on top and on the bottom, and another seed tray to cover it so that they don't curl up. I'm gonna put this in an oven for about 10, 15 minutes at 300. According to the cookbook, the hard part is, is 
over now, I think, as far as salmon goes. All you have to do is cure meat and then a roast a bone. Pretty much just adding a salt to take the water out from the protein. And I'm gonna put this on a paper towel and then put it in the fridge for about a half hour when I don't see any more salt on top of the salmon. And then if I see the paper is wet, that's another sign that the curing is finished. I'm gonna throw some plastic wrap down. I'm gonna throw some kanbu on this bad boy. Rest that filet on top of the dry kelp, and then the water will naturally come out from the filet, and then the flavor from kombu would actually penetrate back into the filet. So it's a exchange of water and umami. So these are curing now, allegedly. Put it in the fridge and then let it cure. For like 12 whole hours. So my crispy salmon skin is done, so I'm gonna use this for my side dishes. All right, so I gotta get the stock. Idea of this donabe dish is you separate the whole fish into bones and the filet. Bones becomes really nice delicious broth that goes into the rice and then the meat will go back on top of it at the end. Uh, this philosophy is called motai nai in Japanese, which means no waste. Uh, this broth is gonna be for cooking the rice. So the rice is gonna get super flavorful. Roast the salmon bone first. Gonna throw this into the oven. It's like 450 for like a couple minutes. Adding salmon bones into the broth is really good. But to make really good broth in general, you wanna add at least two different types of ingredients. Clams will go in. And then you're gonna bring a cold water into a pot with manila clam and then a kombu together. And then you're gonna slowly cook both ingredients. They say that a wash pot never boils but uh, I've got to watch this one because I've never seen a clam open underwater before. So I don't want to miss that and overcook the clams. So you want to make sure that the meat is tender and flavorful. So don't overcook. Within that first half hour, the clam will open up slowly. As soon as they open, you want to take it out. Oh, one popped open. Bam, okay. After 30 minutes or so, the, all the clams should be open. It's everything, it's everyone, everyone's out? Cool, let me grab the bones from the oven. So I got this brown rice from Daniel. I'm making salmon kakiyage rice burger. So I have to cook this brown rice and then make this into a bun. The first step, it starts from washing it. You guys just gonna remove some of the dirt that comes with the rice and also makes it a little bit less starchy. Brown rice has a still bran attached to the white rice. So it takes more water uh, to be able to be cooked. Setting to brown, and then this smart rice cooker is gonna do everything for me. <laughs> Hell yeah. Woohoo! Check that out. So, like 15, 20, let this boil, and then I'm gonna take the kombu out. After that, you're gonna keep the temperature, medium heat, and then you're gonna bring the roasted salmon bone onto the broth and I keep one another half hour. I'm just gonna watch it. When the broth is roasted, the color of the broth will be more brown because of the roasted uh, bone. This smells phenomenal. Strain the broth, make sure the broth is cooled off completely. Whew, what a process. My brown rice is finished. I'm gonna make this into the shape of a hamburger bun. I have this plastic wrap, and then take this rice. I actually never use brown rice, but it looks great. You don't use brown rice a lot? Not at all. But maybe I will after this. <laughs> Rice burger buns are ready. And I go in the fridge. Ikura shoyu zuke, salmon roll marinade. Ikura is a salmon roll. Whoa, this is phenomenal. And the flavor's unreal, wow. I'm gonna throw some of the kombu in here. Then I'm gonna put the roe in there. Add a peel of the kombu. It's gonna add a really nice aroma. Is it even coming out? How the hell do you get the rind of this thing? This is like this tough skin. Ah. He's gonna marinate that with the soy sauce, mirin, and then sake. And this looks like an intense, so I mean, look at this creature on here. It's like a, what is it, like a warlock or like a yeti? Ah, it's called the yeti sake. <laughs> Always have to try it, cause you know, if you don't try it, how are you supposed to know uh, what it tastes like? Good stuff. Equal parts mirin and sake. Two tablespoons total here. Again, I'm trying to be super gentle here because I don't want to break the roe. Mirin actually is a preservative. We can't preserve it for a long time. Otherwise, fish will go bad very quickly. And that is my ikura shoyu zuke, or my salmon roe marinade.
Daniel was planning to make some kind of a marinade for the salmon with combination of these ingredients. I'm gonna use them to make something more special. Caramelized orange teriyaki sauce. And then that's gonna be great for my burger. So I'm gonna just slowly heat up the uh, sugar until they all melt and then becomes almost like a caramel. It takes about like five, 10 minutes. And meanwhile, I'm going to use this orange and then just cut the peel. I'll save this for my side dish. And I'm gonna use this for my sauce. The edge gets cooked much, much quicker, so I'm trying to mix it evenly. I'll turn it off, and then I'm going to add the orange, peel the soy sauce, and also vinegar. The heat is off. My sauce is done and ready for my burger. Time to make some rice. The rice that Daniel's using is called the Koshi Hikari rice from Japan. That's a higher quality and it has really nice sweet flavor. We're gonna make this Koshi Hikari rice even more special by cooking it with a special broth. It still smells like the best thing ever. Cooking rice in Donabe is my favorite way of cooking rice. It's quicker and more flavorful. I'm gonna rinse all this stuff off. Make sure it is an equal amount by volume. So you have one cup of rice, add one cup of broth, and then uh, cover the pot. Turn the heat really high. I've got this ripping, it's gonna be pretty hot. As soon as the steam comes out, you turn the heat very low, but I make sure that the tiny bit of steam is keep coming out. You're gonna keep that stage for about 15 minutes. After that, you're gonna turn off the heat completely, so you shouldn't see any more steam coming out. And then you're gonna rest that for another 15 minutes. Please be good, please be good. So now I'm going to finish my rice buns, ready to be seared with sesame oil. I wanna make sure it's very crispy. And then I'm gonna do another step over searing. So I'm gonna take the excess oils off and then I'm gonna cook them until they get the really, really crispy. Right, that's it. My rice buns are ready. So I got this basic vegetable from Daniel. I'm gonna be making broccoli, carrot, orange, namuru. It is a pickle of vegetables uh, together with sesame oil. Daniel's also gonna be making some pickled vegetables. Never pickled before, uh, but I think it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and get started by peeling these radishes. So the carrot, I'm gonna just take the skin off. The skin is gonna be used for my burger. And then the core inside of the carrot is gonna be for my namuru. I'm gonna give these guys a little choppy chop now. And uh, broccoli. The stock is gonna be for my burger, and then the top part is gonna be for my namuru. I'm gonna peel the butt off of this thing. Let's do like a Romanesca steak, and then from here, we cut the inside. Nice. So I'm gonna be saving the carrot skin and then uh, broccoli stem for my burger later. This is the combination of the carrot and then broccoli top part. I'm gonna use these to make broccoli, carrot, orange, namuru. Equal parts sugar and salt. It doesn't really take that much time to pickle too, so it's really nice technique to add a quick pickle into this donabe dish. Just salt it, toss it. I have this orange leftover from my teriyaki sauce. I'm gonna actually make a little segment and then add it into my namuru and then rice vinegar and then uh, sesame oil and then that should do it. So this is my broccoli, carrot, and orange namuru. So this is going to be the curing process for the vegetables. And I love how some of those little like mountainous looking things from the Romanesco are actually intact in there. It's gonna be a really cool touch at the end. So I'm going to start prepping for my burger. It is salmon kakiyage. Salmon's been curing for more than like half hour. It's more glossy, the meat is a bit tighter. In my opinion, the taking the moisture out from a, especially fish is a very important process. So the skin, I'm gonna just keep it as it is. But then I'm going to cut this in a little bit similar shape, real like ribbons. Next thing is I'm going to start cutting the salmon. Then I'm going to make better for uh, the kakiyage tempura. Usually it's a uh, flour, but I got cornstarch. I think cornstarch usually will make it a little bit more crispier finish compared to uh, flour. So I got everything ready to make this kakiyage, and then the next step is to fry them. My salmon is done curing now, which is great. It's been like 12 full hours. You're gonna be cooking this salmon in a skewer. You're gonna hang the skewer onto some kind of pot. That will take excess water out completely. The entire fish is gonna be very juicy and crunchy. You're gonna cook it in an oven 
for about eight to 10 minutes. At like 500 degrees on this almost like makeshift rotisserie thing. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Sexy, sexy salmon. So I got everything I need, hot oil, and kakiyage ingredients, and then batter ready. So I'm gonna start frying. So I'm gonna just loosen up the uh, batter because it's with the cornstarch, it's always sinks to the bottom. Ingredient, uh, shape of the kakiyage needs to be rounded. And then go like this. Okay, this looks good. And I'm gonna use this. So they stick together. And then want to have like a really, really crunchy texture. And this is actually perfect. And this is done. My kake is ready. Time to get to plating. Everything smells so good. First off, the rice. Oh, nice. I'm gonna build the plate together in the donabe. I think that'd look really cute. If we get one of these skewers. We are gonna do our best here. Now, I'm gonna put some of these clams around. I'm gonna go in with my pickled veggies. There is a little bit of the roe that I'm gonna to top the actual salmon with, or some kumquat. I'm gonna actually slice this and use this as a garnish. And last but not least is a little bit of mint. And this is my take on Chef Yuji's salmon recipe. A lot of steps that went into this. So I am hoping that it's all <laughs> worth it in the end and it tastes really good. I cannot wait to see what he did with mine. I'm sure it's gonna blow whatever I had planned out of the water. So time to assemble my burger. I have everything I need here, but I realized that my buns need more color. So I have this pro torch. Bun on the bottom. So they originally I was going to use this crispy salmon skin for my side namuru dish, but now I realize it's gonna be great inside a burger. Kakiyage. Orange zest is actually pretty tasty. I'm gonna actually use it as part of the filling. Caramelized orange teriyaki, side dish. Here's my take on Daniel salmon recipe. Salmon kakiyage rice burger. What's hey. up, dude? Hey, how's it going, Good to see you. Good to see you. This was, this was a lot. This <laughs> process, man. This is crazy. You put me through the ringer. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, just learned a lot <laughs> from <laughs> How do you usually do it? Uh, I was gonna put this in the middle and then I was gonna just put everything more evenly, but the way that you played it is actually very nice. You wanna try it? Yes. Yeah? Dig okay. in and then try to get... A little bit of everything? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of everything as much as possible. Mmm. That's delicious. So good. It's so good. It's crazy too how much flavor the clams yeah, yeah, yeah. impart into the rice. Into rice, right? Yeah. yeah. I could never think to do that for like my own broth, mm. you know? But now that you show me, I'm like, I can't go back to, <laughs> to home broth. I think the presentation was so good. <laughs> I mean, I knew taste was gonna be good, but uh, presentation made it even better, I think. What did you do with mine? So I wanted to make something completely different. I always had this idea of making a rice burger. The salmon skewer with the vegetables, cut things. Should yeah. we dig in? Yeah. Yeah? Cheers, man. Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. Nice, yeah. <laughs> Dude, what? The rice has such a nice texture. The salmon's amazing. Mm. I'm actually surprised myself, yeah. Look at that caramel sauce. Mmm. Veggies are great. Veggies are great. You gotta cut the cameras. I'm about to go. <laughs> I'm gonna go off on this thing. You're the best. No, you're the best. <laughs>